Hello, Chris Green here with the Flood Insurance Guru. We've been talking about letter of map amendments, letter of map revisions, uh, getting flood zone changed when homes are under construction. Well, today we're talking about what is the actual process of getting this flood zone changed? You know, what do you need to have to make sure this gets done properly? How long is the time frame? Those are some things we're gonna talk about today. So what exactly is this process? Well, there's a few documents that are usually needed in this process. And in getting these documents, we can pretty much tell you whether you would be able to get your property removed or not. So some of those things that are gonna be needed, not always, is an elevation certificate. That just makes it the easiest. You don't necessarily have to have one. We could track down what's called the lowest adjacent grade, which is the grade uh, next to your building to measure it against the base flood elevation. But one of the other reasons uh, we always recommend getting a elevation certificate, if there's one out there, is it gives us all the other numbers on there as well. So you've got like your top of bottom floor, your machinery, your lowest adjacent grade, your highest adjacent grade, if you've got an attached garage, it's got all these different elevations. And so all these elevations need to be above the base flood elevation to really have any chance of getting your flood zone changed. And so that's why we say getting an elevation certificate. Now the other thing is before going and getting that elevation certificate, you wanna make sure you reach out to someone to do what's called a zone determination. This determines what flood zone your property's in. So if your property's in a, a flood zone A, there may not be a base flood elevation. So the elevation certificate might be a complete waste of money as well as getting the flood zone change done because there's nothing to measure the risk against. So it's something you wanna be careful with. But in getting the eleva having the elevation certificate, there's just a few elevations we use off of there. Usually FEMA will wanna see like a property deed or something that shows that you own the property. So we submit these things to FEMA. Uh, FEMA will normally send out a local floodplain manager to look at the property to sign off whether they're gonna approve it or not. And going through this whole process generally can be anywhere from 30 to 90 days, whether it will get approved or it doesn't get approved. Now, when you're out there and going through this process, a lot of these companies are gonna charge you fees and all these things. So you wanna be real careful about that, that if your flood zone doesn't get changed, are these fees uh, refundable? So that's one of the things we do here at the Flood Insurance Guru is we do these flood zone changes. And if for some reason um, the flood zone change is not approved, the fees that we charge are completely refundable or can simply be applied to your flood insurance. So this is kind of how this whole process works when it comes to getting your flood zone changed. So maybe you think that you shouldn't be in a high risk flood zone and, you're in a, and you should be in a low risk zone and you wanna argue that or you just want someone to take a look at say, hey, do I even have a chance of getting this thing changed? Please click the link below and we'd be happy to review it for you. Remember, we have an educational background in flood mitigation. So we can help you understand your flood risks, your flood insurance and mitigating your property long-term. Thank you for watching our series on flood zone changes. We look forward to helping you in any way possible. Remember, visit our YouTube channel, subscribe there where we do our daily flood education videos, like our Facebook page, The Flood Insurance Guru, or visit our website, floodinsuranceguru.com. Thank you.